Hello, my name is Simon Park and I'm the author of the Abbot Peter Murder Mystery Series and uh, I'm here today to read you a chapter from the latest, uh, latest murder mystery which is a very public school murder which unsurprisingly is set in a public school and we pick up the story with Penny a member of the senior management team at Stormhaven Towers Penny being interviewed by uh, Abbot Peter and his sidekick D.I. Tamsin Shah. So Penny is just about to arrive and they're waiting for her now. Penny arrived distracted and explained her lateness. They've just found my phone, she said, slightly breathless with the drama. Who found it? asked Peter, aware of the backstory here. Well, it was Jeff, I think. It was him who told me anyway. Found it there this morning. Complete mystery. Found it where? said Peter. Well, next to the sink in the common room kitchen. Peter took this in with interest. God knows how he got there. It's not a sink I ever used. It's a health risk. I didn't know you'd lost it, said Tamsin, feeling out of the loop with everyone else. She didn't like not knowing what was going on. It disappeared yesterday, said Penny, now looking at Peter with disapproval. He had not been helpful last night, and it wasn't forgotten. I'm sure I had it when you spoke to us all, so perhaps it was someone in the common room. Would you like to sit down, said Tamsin. Peroxide Penny was still standing, looking down on them, which gave her too much power. We perhaps have bigger things on our agenda than your phone. Peter, however, was fascinated by the phone, particularly the location of its discovery. By the sink, in the common room, which struck him as odd. Why there? But in the meantime, he'd calm Tamsin's anxious psyche by filling her in. Penny reported its uh, disappearance last night, he said, remembering the unfortunate scene in the, his bedroom. Not that that helped at all, said Penny. But I'm glad it's turned up, Penny's. Peter smiled as best he could. And before you ask, yes, there is an alert out for Jennifer. It doesn't work, said Penny. What doesn't? The phone. It looks like it fell in the sink or something. No life in it. Oh well, said Tamsin, wanting to get on. Rice can sometimes do the trick, said the abbot, who'd once used this method after dropping his phone in the sea. Really? It was an angry, really. Uncooked, obviously, said Peter. Stick it in a packet of rice and it may do the trick. I'm more concerned about Jennifer, she said, sitting down with a sigh. I don't think rice will help her. Do you, abbot? That put Peter in his place. We'll find her, said Tamsin, or she'll suddenly appear, that's my guess. Suddenly appear from where? said Penny. Oh, I've seen it so often. She's been missing for, what, 14 hours, which isn't a lot. Though in the circumstances of this, Tamsin wasn't mentioning. It was a great deal and a matter of concern. Like a swan, Tamsin was serene on the surface, but her mind paddled furiously beneath the water. You're clearly concerned about Jennifer Penny. Do you think she had reasons to be concerned? Not that I know of. Well, why would she? Well, I don't know, said Tamsin. I mean, I suppose she was close to the headmaster, as his PA, obviously, she would be. I mean, perhaps she knew things. Knows things, said Peter. Knows things. Oh, yes, oh God, I'm sorry, that's terrible, said Penny, blushing a little and flustered. My fears run ahead of me. Fears often do, he said, allowing Penny some recovery time after the Freudian slip. And I didn't mean to insinuate anything last night, Abbott, she said, calming a little. You know, with regard to you and uh, the boy, Crispin, I mean. Have I missed something? asked Tamsin. You've missed nothing, said Peter, because that's what it was, nothing. Crispin had seen a ghost. He was disturbed and needed to talk. A and I was just disturbed, said Penny, about Jennifer. I shouldn't have said what I said. The stressed need a scapegoat, said the abbot, tethered to a post. And there I was. Peter was still angry. Y you're good friends, are you? You and uh, Jennifer, said Tamsin hurriedly. She wanted away from the scapegoat narrative. Peter had clearly slept on his rage, but not exorcised it. Oh, we're close, yes. Well, we've grown close. I mean, I can't begin to say what her death would mean to me. I mean, I mean how it would affect me. Her death, said Tamsin. Well, let's, let's not be hasty here. And now for the ammunition casually handed to them in conversation with Terence. What goes round comes round. 
and poor old Terence sobbing in the chapel, said the abbot. Uh, Penny was thrown. Uh, it must have been disturbing. I mean, why were you there with him? Oh, well, well, I wasn't uh, with him. I was with Jamie. Oh, Peter feigned surprise. Yes, I think we both felt we needed some quiet away from the others and went to the chapel to sit down for a while. How very holy, said Tamsin. But she wasn't that sort, surely. I mean, clearly Jeff wasn't happy with the head about being, well, moved sideways. Though, let's be honest, it was effectively demotion. Jamie could see straight through Jeff. Well, I'm sure he wasn't happy, said Tamsin. There's not much to celebrate in demotion. So we needed to consider how best to handle that, said Penny. What, the two of you? Yes. And did you have some ideas? I'm sorry? How best to handle that? Oh, uh, just uh, pastoral support, really. Not the strong hand of either Penny or Jamie, Peter imagined. And so he didn't believe the story. You and the head were a bit of a team, were you? he asked. I suppose we were, yes, and it, it, it's a very happy memory, our time there together in the chapel. I mean, just Jamie and I sitting alongside each other another year over. It's a significant piece of work in a, in a school year. You know, it's, I mean, it's a journey you travel side by side. And we just sat and gazed at those, well, awful stained glass windows full of bearded saints with halos. The saints don't do it for you, said Tamsin. Well, do they do it for you? Well, I don't sit in churches. I mean, no offence, Abbott, said Penny, but, but they're not modelling anything very interesting for my girls, said Penny. I was just saying this to Jamie, actually. Images of strong women would be more helpful. People like you, for instance, Tamsin. Tamsin took the compliment. Any other women come to mind, asked Peter, always interested in the heroes people chose for themselves. Lady Macbeth, said Penny, again for her strength of character. <laughs>